First of all, who here likes wine? Really? What a surprise! Well, first of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Don Schwartz. Very close, by the way. Thank you. Um, I'm the winemaker for Abbe Vineyard Winery. We are a very small boutique winery here in Federal Way. Our production is about 2,000 cases a year. I'm not sure how many of you were, but we actually grow on site. Actually, actually, yes, in Federal Way, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grapes. And we make wine from them. In fact, if you entered your little business cards, in the drawing, in the gift bags that we brought to them, is the Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from Federal Way. So I hope all of you put your business cards in the, uh, what do you call the little container over there. Besides uh, having a steak grown fruit, the winery is fully functional with all the bells and whistles. We actually do all the work on site, as you can see in the pictures over here. We have a crusher, the stemmer, all the pipes, and the best part is barrels filled with wine. Any of you of that? Outstanding. This last year we were fortunate. We were actually able to open up a tasting room. And for that I want to thank the chamber as well as uh, all the people who worked in the city of Fit Away and also the mayor uh, in pr processing uh, the licensing properly and we look forward to working with all of them in the near future as well. Thank you. <laughs> so I told you a little bit about that. Let me tell you about me. Uh, Guna calls me a wine snob and that I am. That's a good thing. I'm also sommelier which I passed the exam back in 2011. Wow. So I've been in the business for quite a few years. Actually, I was uh, in the business now for 25 years on the distributor side. Everything from working for Young's Columbia, all the way to management, also corporate chain call, and working a little bit with the legislature in Olympia, but not too much of that. That's more your uh, expertise. <laughs> Basically, boutique winery is also known as a micro winery or the fancy name garagiste. <laughs> I know, really fancy, how like great coupon? Exactly. <laughs> many times, winemakers do not even, many times, the garagistes or the other wineries do not have location to. You can't hear me, Glenna? Speak up. Oh, People okay. In the back won't hear you. Does this help any? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, how's that sound? Better? Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Um, basically, many times the other wineries do not actually have a site where they can grow their own fruits or labors. So they bring in their Cabernet, their Merlot, their Chardonnay from whichever place they can get it from. Yes, we do produce some ourselves, which is the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, but we're also fortunate enough to have hand contracts with people in Red Mountain, Walla Walla, and Prosser. So the top growing regions actually, I think, in the world. And I've traveled a little bit of it. So as you can imagine, a grape plant. A grape plant is pretty much just like a large vine. And vines like to grow like crazy. Well, our vines, as we come around and take a look at the pictures, are grown with trellising and cordon, a double cordon. So that way, you get proper aeration, and also the sunlight hits it. What happens to a vine when sunlight hits it? It grows like crazy. So once it goes usually above 10 or 12 feet, Vilnius is out there every morning, clipping the very tops of them down to about 10 feet, which happens consistently for the lat latter portion of the summer. I'm out there once in a while, but that's our free labor, as one might say, once in a while. And going to helps too. <laughs> From the vines that we have now, we actually transplanted 2,500 of them from Cedro Lahuli from a distillery that was closing. That was done over the winter time, using a bucket to pull them out of the ground, putting them into trash bags, putting them back in U-Haul, and U-Hauling it all the way down from Cedar Woolley, down to here at Federal Way, put them in the ground, and then try and let them grow. We thought that was a good idea. So far it's been pretty good. We've only lost what, Bill, about uh, 10 to 12 plants out of 2,500 of them. So that's not too shabby. Obviously, Federal Way is the place to grow, right? Exactly, that's what I thought. The good part is also is that we're about 10 degrees actually warmer than SeaTac Airport. We're in a small microclimate, and that microclimate actually is very nice 
except for when the rains come. Now, as you all know, when rains arrive, what happens to your tomato plants? They tend to burst, right? Same thing happens to grapes. The problem with the grape clusters, it's not forgiving. Those sugars drizzle right on top of the rest of the cluster and destroys the entire cluster and brings in mold. That mold then goes from one cluster to another to another and can destroy an entire row. Our rows roughly are 350 feet long and have about 112 plants, no wait, 75 plants per each row. So you just imagine sometimes what devastation could occur as we were briefly talking, as you obviously Josh talked, said earlier about devastation, having to work those climates. Also, we have morning fog that loves to sit in there beautifully once in a while. So we're facing a few things, but all in all, we're very fortunate. We should look for in a great one for, uh, yes, okay. Didn't make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, once our grapes have reached proper levels of sugar, which is called bricks, what you want for a brick is basically the tip, no, the tartaric acid as, long, as well as the bricks combined actually makes a good cluster. That then we verify. We pick it, that's Val, Gunn, and myself, and also once in a while we're lucky enough to have some people that want to come in as volunteers. And we pick all the grapes and put them onto the crush pad. That crush pad then is where we have our distemmer and crusher, which we can regulate how slowly or how quickly we're able to actually create the juice or the must of the actual wine. Now that's just part of it. From there, it goes into either barrels for fermentation or over to our fermentation bins. And then it gets to sit there for about two to three weeks. Those two to three weeks are a lot of fun. Reason being is this. What happens to grapes is it creates a large cap. It's usually about that thick. A big square area about almost the size of the upper area that you can see up here. <coughs> that then you have to punch down every single day. So you're pushing through the cap every single day, making sure that the air gets to the sugars and the yeast to transfer into alcohol, which is why we all drink wine once in a while, right? It's been a long day, we need something to, you know, alleviate it. <laughs> then we're one step closer the aging, but yet we still have to do one more thing. We have to press it. So then it goes into our pneumatic press, which is a one ton. That usually takes about an hour to an hour and a half per ton. This last year, from the grapes that we brought in from Eastern Washington, which was a little bit of Pinot Noir, but most of it from our, we also had our own product, that almost took, what did the math, almost 18 and a half hours. So that's a slow process. It takes a lot of work, but once you push it through, you put it in the barrels, and goes in storage. We're not even done yet. <coughs> now comes the aging factor. So imagine having inventory all the way back to 12, 000, uh, 2011 that we're just now getting ready to put in the bottle. So we have years of product that we're lucky enough to be able to work with and create a fantastic product that people do want to enjoy, take their homes, parties, events, all those wonderful things. Now once you've come up with the correct profile in the wine, then you put it into a bottle and let it sit for about three months. Those three months is what's called bottle shock. And bottle shock can actually make a wine have the offset flavor of almost no mid palate and a very sharp finish. Once it's done with bottle shock, it opens up beautifully once you open the bottle up. It is very enjoyable. All this is the work and final result of us being able to show the heart we put into a bottle of wine that we produce. Our taste room has allowed us to show our wines to many different customers from wide range of cities near Federal Way. Now, of course, we have had um, a few events from people of Federal Way as well. But some of the other locations have been JBLM, there was a birthday party. A few banks have come from Seattle as well to show, uh, have their business meetings. Uh, election campaigns from foot away here. 
business meetings, and also holiday business events. And for all that, we're also very thankful. As with every business, we all have a lot of work which is done behind the scenes. We at Ave Vineyard Winery hope that our hard work and dedication to wines will entice you to stop by, try our Chardonnay, Red Blends, Syrah, and Reserve Carmenere. At this time, we have about 12 different wines that you can sample depending on the style and varietal that your taste buds would enjoy. For the, those of you who come today, we have a special treat. We have a 15% discount coupon that we're going to be emailing you from those business cards that we have that you come out to the winery, try our wines, and receive the discount. Thank you very much. Are there any questions that I can answer? Do you bring any samples? <laughs> Good question. Um, no, not today, but that's, the, that's why you need to stop by the winery. So you have to drive through the vineyard, you have to see what the beautiful wines are like. But uh, any other questions by chance? Yes. Did you yeah. bottle your Super Tuscan yet? That's being bottled, the Super Tuscan, which is actually is our combination of Sanchoese and Cabernet. It's going to be an 80 20 split, um, and that's going to be probably bottled around March. Uh, I'm not quite happy yet with the Sanchoese. That's one of my other jobs. I actually have to go through and taste all 380 barrels once in a while. That's a lot of spitting. Don't worry, I'll drink and drive. Um, and. Uh, it's coming along, but it's got a hint of that sharpness that you and I taste that one day. It still hasn't mellowed, so I'm actually thinking about putting into Hungarian barrels strictly versus the French and American oak that I have now. Most of our barrels are actually French. That we actually uh, we just went down to Napa and were able to purchase quite a few barrels. Uh, what was it, Vilni? Close to 61, 61 plus, barrels. Plus the Pinot Punchins. Plus the Pinot Punchins. Now, have it, has anyone here ever seen a Pinot Punchin? No? Okay. It's a, it's a barrel that's two and a half times the size of a regular barrel. So it holds a little bit of wine. Thank you. Most of our Pinot Noir is in those. Any other questions? Yes? I'm impressed that you passed that Somme exam. I watched that documentary Somme. That is hard to do. I think there are just a few hundred of them. Very, very, well, actually, I didn't pass the Master Somme. Okay. I passed level two. Got it. Um, and level two, well, Master Psalms right now, there's 1,344 in the United States. Okay. That I heard of as of December through a bunny of mine. Um, Master Psalm, there's about 5,000 of us. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun taking the test because it's literally two days and yep. they, it's a, basically an oral exam. Yep. It's a lot of fun. Anybody who ever want to taste, take one, come down the wine and I'll give it to you. What are your hours? <laughs> what are your hours? Uh, Fridays and Saturdays, right now when we have the tasting room open, it is 11 to 6. Um, otherwise, we also, I'm down there most of the time. If I'm not, Vilnius is down there in Saragona, they live on site. Um, but and they can give me a buzz and say, hey, someone's going to be coming down. But I have also my business cards, you can easily reach out to me. Uh, I'm happy to take anyone through the barrel room, do a tasting for you, as well as look at our new taste room that we just put together. Actually, just bought we actually just bought new stools, so it's nice and soft to sit on. For those of you who've been there before, maybe the stools a little hard before we switched them out. <laughs> Someone else had another question back. Yes. Where is your location locally, and are you, is your wine available in any local stores? Well, we were at QFC until they changed their entire parameter of how QFC does things now. They used to be known as, as you all knew, the big ad saying "local now." Right. Yeah, to some extent, yes, but their corporate philosophy is. If it doesn't sell a million dollars a year, they don't put it on the floor. So it's a lot of toilet paper and man, which, which is great to some extent. But, you know, it doesn't help the boutique guys. Um, locally, right now, no. Unfortunately, uh, Fiddle Way does not have a bottle shop. I'm hoping one will be coming back in. I haven't heard of a thing, but anything can happen in this wonderful town. Um, otherwise, all the wine can be purchased at our winery. Uh, and if it's a case, uh, I'd be happy to drop it off to your office for you without any uh, additional cost. <laughs> I mean, really don't know why people like that idea. <laughs> any other questions? Yes? The dinosaur here in the bar. Well, yes, for those who are club members here, yes. Our wine is here as well. Our Chardonnay and our Sangiovese are being served by the glass here in the bar area in case you're a member. Um, and then also the, at the Jazz Festival, we're going to be. Um, Show uh, going to be the wine there for the jazz event that's happening when here? Loose on September 8th. September 8th, yes. So, any other questions I can answer? Yes? Okay, for the 30% of Americans that do not drink wine, 
mm -hmm. There absolutely is, but you have to get a hold of the winery, um, and you have to just be caught right then and there at the time of processing. The problem is, it's going to turn very quickly. It's going to turn brown on you. Even if you put in green colored glass, um, the oxidation occurs, and it just kills kills the juice. Because most of us don't. For instance, also none of our wines, zero of our wines, have added sulfites. You need to add sulfites to the juice, which would considerably change the process of the of flavor profile as well. I haven't heard of anyone really doing it yet. I know some people have talked about it, but there must be more reasoning that it's maybe Josh knows. It's not common right now. Yeah, it's not common right now. But, you know, I guess, you know, if you request it from me and you can be there that day and pick it up for me, I'd be happy to do it for you. And that usually happens around August, end of August, possibly through October, depending on how Mother Nature decides to honor us with her uh, vintages that she wants to give us. Any other questions I can answer? Yes? Do you have a wine club and how would people join that? Uh, the wine club at this point in time, I'm trying to work on the website design company that we're using, uh, we have some troubles with. and. We're supposed to be up and running, everything's on there, but it's not transferring the information over to us. So I'm having to change that part. I'm hoping to have that done in the next couple of weeks. Yes? Um, you mentioned that your wine is available here at Twin Lakes. Are there any other local bars or restaurants or establishments in the Federal White area that you have a relationship with? Not as of yet. Uh, and to be honest with you, also, I really haven't gone out into this area. I, I, we are in some locations downtown Seattle. Uh, as well up to Mount Baker, uh, also Leavenworth as well, um, but nothing here local that I've found that could carry, it varies on price point unfortunately, because there's certain things that people, certain restaurants look for to get, be able to get the margins they want. Unfortunately with the boutique winery might be a little more expensive but not by much than, a, you know, Sato St. Michelle. Any other questions? Oh uh, yes. So I enjoy a glass of wine, but I don't really think about the science behind it, which was really interesting to listen to you talk about all that. Um, do you ever, or would you ever, like, host, like, maybe kids coming into the field trips to learn about it, kind of the, the back end of it? Yeah. Uh, well, we try to keep kids away. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you a different question. Would you ever consider coming into a classroom to talk to kids or students about the science part, too? I'd be, you know, I'd be happy to. You know, I think the more education for children, grown-ups, is absolutely necessary. Um, in fact, I'm, I've been toying with the pro possibility of actually having a class in-house at the winery for grown-ups and actually taking them through the basics of learning about why you're picking up certain aromas and structures on wine. So for kids, that wouldn't exactly be the thing, but I'd be happy to t take you, you know, children through a different process. Okay, here's the bumblebee, it does this, you know, all the wonderful things, and you know, we have mold come around, which is the bad thing, so we kill, kill it with powerful no, sulfate. Oh, high school kids. Oh, okay, I didn't know how, well, I didn't know how young the kids were. All right, any other questions by chance? No? Thank you very much.